Hi there, this is John, your instructor. I wanted to just give you a brief demo on how to spike an IV bag. Um, more than likely, if you work as an EMT out in the field, you're going to work with a paramedic and they're going to ask you to spike an IV bag for them to prep the patient for whatever kind of treatment there might be. You've already watched the other video. You have a general idea of there's two types of IV, IV bags out there in the field in EMS. There's a 1,000 milliliter bag, which is the most commonly used one. There's a 250cc uh, bag, uh, and there's also a 100cc bag as well. So just whatever the medic wants, spiking is exactly the same. It's the same procedure anyway. There's two drip chambers or drip sets that we use out in the field. Uh, the first one is a, uh, a 10 dripper, 10 drop, so 10 drops per milliliter. Uh, this is called a maxi dripper, so it pr provides the maximum amount of flow, the quickest amount of fluids to the patient as possible. Uh, if you attach this dripper to a 1,000 cc bag of fluid, you can empty the bag in about 10 or 15 minutes or so. It's pretty quick. So again, this is someone who, who's having traumatic injuries, blood loss, low blood pressure. The other one is the, uh, the, the mini dripper. Uh, so it's, this is 60 drops per milliliter. So it takes 60 drops to deliver one milliliter of fluid to the patient through the drip chamber. Uh, this is more for maintaining a, a vein open. It's called TKO, to keep open the vein. Also, medics use this uh, to deliver different kinds of medications. Nice, slow, steady drip of medications. Works pretty well with that. Uh, like I said, normally we have a 1,000 cc bag and the 250 cc bag. What I have here are 500 cc bags. That's what I have to work with today. Um, these are found in hospital settings primarily. You'll notice they come in an outer bag. This is a sterile procedure. This bag is now sterile inside. You'll also notice that they're all going to have these tear points. This is where you actually tear the bag open and remove the, the IV bag. You want to make sure that it's not expired. You want to check for clarity, make sure there's nothing floating in it that shouldn't be floating in it. You have two ports here, and the port, the smaller port, this is for the medic injecting medications into the bag when they're doing some kind of drip system. And this blue one, or whatever color might be on your bag, this is when you actually pull off to expose the port where you spike the bag. That's a sterile um, area right there. You don't want to touch that tip. Then you want to pull out your drip chamber. Let's call it the, the let's just use the, the 10 dropper today. You pop this one open as well. And again, this is a sterile procedure. You will have your safety, you'll have your safety gear on, your uh, your gloves and all that on old bag here. Hold on a second. There we go. And so what comes out is you have this drip chamber and the drip set. On one end of the device, you have the spike that goes into the bag, you have the drip chamber. There's also a little control wheel here. So if you slide this wheel all the way down to the bottom, like that turns off the IV. If you slide it all the way to the top, the IV is now wide open, maximum flow. So you want to turn this off right now because you don't want any flow to occur just yet. On the other end, you have a cap. You leave the cap on because it's, again, it's a sterile procedure. That, that cap's going to come off when the uh, medic uh, uh, hooks us up to the IV they started. So I have this. I'm going to take the cap off of here. It's got, it's got a sharp spike on it. Again, this is a sterile area, so we don't want to touch that area. What you want to do is you want to gently twist this in back and forth into the bag until it all of it goes all the way to the hub and it breaks the, the seal inside. And now what you want to do is you want to fill this drip chamber about half full. How you do that is by squeezing the drip chamber. What you're doing is you're getting water into there or normal saline. And you want to squeeze it a couple of times until you're about half full in the drip chamber. Then drop the, the end of the tubing into the trash can on the back of the ambulance or onto the ground. And then you're going to open up this wheel wide open. You can see now it's running wide open fluids running. The idea is you want to get all of the air out of the tubing to where water is coming out of the bottom of the tubing by the blue tip and then that purges all of the air. Once you get that done you would then turn off the drip wheel all the way down to zero so there's no 
no water flowing, and you would hang this up uh, in the back of the ambulance or in this case onto a uh, IV pole like that, and then you would uh, hand this to the to the paramedic. When the paramedic wants it, best thing to do is you want you want to grab you as the EMT you want to grab the blue tip like this. You're going to hand them this way. You're holding the this blue little cap. So all they have to do is they have to pull off this, and then they can insert it to the IV, and everything remains sterile. So hand it to them backwards, kind of counterintuitive, but backwards like that. And they'll take it off, and they'll hook it to the patient. So remember, uh, 60 droppers, it's, they call them micro drippers or mini drippers. So this gives very little fluids. Again, it's for primarily administration of medications. So the maxi dripper that I have on here, this would give a max amount of fluids in the shortest amount of time. Hope that helps you guys out in the field.